My name is Mary, and I was born in Guatemala. During the Civil War, my parents struggled to put food on the table. When I was five, my mom walked out of the house and kissed me goodbye. She told me she was gonna go on a long journey to go find me some gummy bears. What she was really searching for was a new life for her three children. <laughs> Two years later, we were reunited in America. I met the love of my life. I became a US citizen, and I started my own family. Eventually, I was fortunate enough to get a job as a nurse at La Clinica de la Raza in the Bay Area. Almost all of the nurse practitioners at La Clinica obtained their education from UCSF. And while I was impressed at all five nursing programs from UCSF, I was most impressed by the compassion that these nurses had for the most vulnerable populations. So through my education at UCSF, I had the opportunity to go work in very remote clinics in Chiapas, which is not very far from Guatemala. I was able to receive a fellowship through the diabetes minor at UCSF, which is the only minor in the entire country that focuses on diabetes. I can't express how fortunate I am to be able to return to these communities with a graduate degree from UCSF. The locals in Chiapas call us saints because of some of the medical miracles that we were able to provide for them. I'm not a saint, but I do understand their gratitude. My own journey has been nothing short of a miracle, and it's an honor to be able to give back. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for coming. Uh, it's also my pleasure to welcome everyone here who is in Cole Hall, those of you who are gathered at Mission Bay, at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, at Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland, at UCSF Fresno, and for those of you who are watching from else, elsewhere on the live stream. So every year around this time, we gather to reflect on the state of the university. We think about our campus and our community. We celebrate good news, big discoveries, and common bonds and collective achievements. So as you may have guessed from the powerful story we just saw, this year's State of the University's address is special. Because today, we launch our first comprehensive fundraising campaign in more than a decade. An undertaking that we are embarking on to help sustain UCSS excellence and build for its future. Today's campaign launch is the culmination of more than a year of planning and walking, working with a broad cross-section of our UCSF community. Indeed, many who have assisted in that planning are with us uh, here today. Now, at its very heart, this campaign is about our people, our faculty, our students, our staff, our postdocs, our fellows, our residents, our alumni, and of course, our patients. This campaign is about empowering you, all of you, to do what you do best. Teach, learn, care, discover, and serve. It's about the transformational power of our community, and you got a glimpse of that power in the film about Mary Masala. Mary, would you please stand? Thank you so much for sharing your personal story and for being a voice of our campaign. And I'm delighted that your family is with you here as well today, so thank you. 
Now before I circle back in a few minutes to talk more about the campaign, I want to highlight a few of the milestones of the past year that exemplify why I am so proud of what you all do every day and why I am so optimistic about our future. We welcome Catherine Gillis back to UCSF as our new Dean of the School of Nursing. <coughs> Catherine is a national leader in nursing, having led the schools at both Yale and Duke universities. So I'm very delighted to have Catherine back to be a member of my leadership team and to advance the school's mission of conducting innovative research, promoting health equity, and of course, teaching. As we welcome one dean, we say farewell to another. This will be the last State of the University address for Dean John Featherston, who will step down as Dean of the School of Dentistry at the end of this year. He'll earn a well-earned retirement, and John, I thank you for a decade of visionary leadership, uh, making the School of Dentistry excel in its missions across research, education, and patient care. We wish you well for the next stage of your career. This year, we also celebrated as UCSF Medical Center was named the fifth best hospital in the nation. The best hospital in California and the best hospital in the West. This ranking is a testament to our unrelenting focus on high quality patient care and increasing safety for our patients, increasing access, investing in our people and improving our patient experience. UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals in San Francisco and Oakland also ranked amongst the country's best children's hospitals in nine specialties. And just this last week, we learned that UCSF Health again achieved the prestigious magnet designation for excellence in nursing, a distinction earned by only 8% of all hospitals in the United States. We take great pride in our long-standing partnership at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, the best safety net hospital in the nation, and the only one that provides both trauma care and psychiatric emergency services in our region. UCSF's Peggy Knudsen, Dean Schillinger, and Anaya Samea were among those honored at this year's Heroes and Hearts Award for going above the call of duty to provide innovations in care for our most vulnerable patients. We also continue to adapt our organization to reflect societal challenges and emerging opportunities in science, to better position us to address emerging global health imperatives, I am pleased to announce today the formation of the Institute for Global Health Sciences, led by Jaime Sepulveda, a world-renowned leader in global health. This new and expanded reorganization of our global health efforts will engage more faculty and more students in finding effective solutions to the world's greatest global health challenges. We have also established a new organized research unit within the School of Pharmacy, the Quantitative Biosciences Institute, or QBI, to strengthen interdisciplinary research in the quantitative biosciences, reflecting the exciting convergence of the life and physical sciences. Led by founding director Nevin Krogan, QBI applies the tools of physical sciences to complex problems in biology, with the ultimate goal of developing new insights into biologic networks and eventually new treatments for diseases. We congratulated our world-renowned scientists and scholars, including this year David Julius, who was recognized with Canada's Gairdner Award for his work in determining the molecular basis of somatosensation, or how we sense heat, cold, and pain. David's work has simulated intense interest amongst some of the world's greatest pharmaceutical companies in the search to find new classes of drugs that will effectively treat pain without the side effects and addictive potential of opioids. And Ron Vale, who was named as the recipient of the 2017 Shaw Prize in Life Sciences and Medicine for his seminal work on motor proteins. These are the little engines within cells that drive the movement and organelles uh, amongst uh, other critical cell processes. 
We also recognised exceptional leadership, scholarship and service. Sarah Engelberth, a postdoctoral scholar in preventive and restorative dental sciences in the School of Dentistry, won this year's second annual UCSF Postdoc Slam, a great event for those of you who can attend next year. Her talk was about her research to generate materials that mimic natural tooth enamel. And Seema Gandhi, an associate professor in anesthesia, who was amongst those praised for their sustainability efforts towards achieving UC's system-wide goal of carbon neutrality by 2025. She is reducing energy use in the operating rooms, amongst other areas in the hospital. Now receiving honors and awards and ceremonies around the world is great, but recognizing exceptional work through a simple thank you note can be meaningful when it comes from one of our own community as a routine part of our workday. This year, we launched a new recognition website that recognizes, uh, called recognize.ucsf.edu that allows anybody, a faculty member, a manager, a staff member, a student, to reach out and thank someone for work well done. So I hope that each of you will regularly take a moment to acknowledge great work to help us foster a culture of appreciation that makes people feel valued and validated. Today I also want to address the unprecedented and unpredictable world in which we live. Without a doubt, we are experiencing a tumultuous time in our history, facing unrelenting social, political and environmental challenges that threaten our values, our rights, and even our lives. Earlier this month, we experienced the deadliest fire in California history. I am intensely proud of our emergency management teams and our healthcare providers who responded immediately. These efforts included our two family medicine residency programs in the Santa Rosa region. Several dozen UCSF faculty members and residents bravely treated their patients as flames surrounded their hospitals and accompanied them to other hospitals for care. Their own primary care clinic was badly damaged and is currently unusual, unusable, but this undaunted team continues to care for their patients where and when they are needed. We also sadly learned that more than 50 members of our UCSF community and their families lost their homes in the fires. We are doing everything we can to help them recover from this loss by offering services such as short and long-term housing rentals and UC emergency loans. Now it will take months, if not years, to rebuild the hardest hit neighborhoods. And I encourage you to help if you can by volunteering or donating to relief efforts to support the survivors. Also this year, Recent tragic events in Las Vegas and Charlottesville have again focused our country on the reckless actions of those who seek to inflict hatred in our communities. I know you know that UCSF is absolutely and unequivocally condemns the violence and intolerance that these events uh, bring to us. As an institution and as individuals, we all have a responsibility to ensure the safety and security of our campus and the communities in which we live. So be vigilant. When you see something out of the ordinary, say something. We know that our university's strength stems from a culture that embraces diversity and inclusion and respects every individual regardless of their race, religion, sexual orientation, gender or national origin. So I'm so proud that time and time again, the University of California, under the strong leadership of UC President Janet Napolitano, has stood in steadfast support of diversity, inclusion, equal opportunity, and equal health care to all. Just yesterday, President Napolitano announced the launch of a national center for free speech and civic engagement in Washington, DC. This center will spearhead a national discussion on defending and advancing the critical values of free speech and civic engagement across our country. 
Ongoing and open dialogue of the issues of our time is important. Through myriad efforts across the campus and health system, we are working to make UCSF an ever more engaged, supportive and inclusive environment. So let's all commit, recommit today to live our pride values, professionalism, respect, integrity, diversity and excellence. Now this year, immigration issues have also roiled the nation. The offices of diversity and outreach and our Office of International Students and Scholars have worked very closely with UC Office of the President on issues concerning undocumented and immigrant faculty, staff and students. Recent town halls in this very room on defending DACA and the importance of diversity have shown the depth of support for our dreamers and their families here at UCSF. We will continue to support our faculty, staff and students who are either immigrants or dreamers so that they can live and learn freely. To help all members of our community thrive, the Office of Diversity and Outreach and the Differences Matter initiative are educating and training our faculty, staff and students to better understand the differences amongst us, mitigate unconscious bias and avoid and address microaggressions in our everyday environment. Two other fundamental underpinnings of our core mission have also come under attack this year. I am so proud of those among us who are standing up and speaking out for both the power of science and for affordable health care for all. As a public university, we firmly believe that the expansion of knowledge through scientific discovery is absolutely vital to our society's freedom and prosperity. Our successful Stand Up for Science teaching and rally held the same day in April as the National March on Science is one way that we have expanded our advo advocacy efforts dramatically this year. Between April and August, UCSF faculty and students and alumni participated in more than 20 face-to-face -face meetings with members of the Trump administration and Congress to advocate against a $7.2 billion proposed cut to the National Institutes of Health budget. Our voices added to a national outcry uh, led Congress to reject the proposed cuts and in fact Congress has signaled its intent to increase the NIH budget by up to $2 billion in fiscal year 2018. There needs to be a budget passed in December for that to actually take effect. <laughs> we are also working as part of the system-wide UC Health and national organizations to fight for the continuation of affordable, comprehensible, comprehensive health insurance coverage for everyone and for our ability to care for all, including the most vulnerable amongst us. Our UCSF community has contributed to the debate on the Affordable Care Act by hosting Senator Dianne Feinstein for a press conference recently on the importance of Medicaid to our children's hospitals. We have also engaged with undecided senators on social media and by writing letters and on calling in person and visiting members of Congress. <coughs> We will continue to advocate relentlessly for federal research, funding for a stable and functioning healthcare marketplace, for fair and equitable immigration policies, and for state support of our mission. So this has been a busy, eventful, but ultimately very exciting and rewarding year. So now let me return to our campaign launch. It is my firm belief that UCSF stands at a unique intersection of time and place. This transformational moment is the impetus for UCSF, the campaign. Our ability to understand the mysteries of biology and the fundamentals of health is undergoing a rapid, perhaps unprecedented acceleration. It is a time of dramatic knowledge creation, discovery, 
and technology revolution. It's a true inflection point in history. It is a time of radical change in our expectations of well-being and longevity. And it is a time of great global challenges that offer world-changing opportunities. We are incredibly fortunate to be situated here in the San Francisco Bay Area at this pivotal, pivotal moment in history. I loved one faculty member who compared the Bay Area in 2017 to Florence, Italy during the Renaissance. I actually don't think that is hyperbole. Every day, I am energized by how the diversity of people and ideas here nurtures innovation and entrepreneurship. Every week, I see new possibilities as life sciences and technology converge. And every month, we have the opportunity to pursue transformational partnerships with other Bay Area universities, community partners, and companies. Just this morning, as San Francisco welcomes the first ever World Conference of Science Journalists to the United States here in San Francisco, Alan Ashworth, a renowned cancer specialist who leads our cancer center, Michelle Arkin from the School of Pharmacy and a renowned drug developer, and Barry Selick, our Vice Chancellor of Business Development, Partnerships and Innovation, announced that UCSF is a founding partner in the Adam Consortium. Now, Adam is a new partnership with the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the pharmaceutical company GSK, and the Frederick National Lab on behalf of the National Cancer Institute. Adam, Adam aims to dramatically accelerate the discovery of effective cancer therapies. It combines high performance computing at Lawrence Livermore, shared big data from public and private sources, deep machine learning, and precision oncology in pursuit of transformational change in the drug discovery paradigm. It's just one example of how our role at this special time and in this special place is so extraordinary. The campaign is exciting, not just for its vision, but also for how it has come together. So many from our community have shared your best thinking to incorporate our values and our priorities, giving shape to our strategies and for the future. Over 15 months, I have worked with my team and leaders from across UCSF on campaign planning. This has included feasibility testing, data gathering, and a wide engagement both within and without UCSF. Faculty members contributed more than 180 exciting ideas that resulted in a set of working themes which were further refined by five faculty working groups. That ultimately led us to our singular campaign theme of pursuing grand challenges. This campaign is about securing UCSF's future. I am convinced that the campaign will be successful for our UCSF community because it was developed by our UCSF community. First and foremost, the campaign represents a $5 billion fundraising effort to build our endowment so that we can attract brilliant minds to UCSF, to sustain foundational support for our mission critical work and our continued excellence. So yes, you heard that right, $5 billion. This is one of the most ambitious fundraising goals undertaken by a public university ever. So I'm delighted to report today that we are well on our way to success. In fact, in just the past few days, we have reached the major milestone of $3 billion pledged. $1 billion of that came from the UCSF Board of Overseers, a truly passionate and devoted group of volunteers for UCSF. These are the funds we raised during the quiet phase of the campaign. The quiet phase started in July 2013, and our success has given us the confidence to today announce and launch the public phase of the campaign. So I am immensely grateful 
to all of our Board of Overseers, but I want to pay special thanks to Bill Obendorf, Chair of the Board and a devoted friend of the University. In addition to his service as Chair of the Board, Bill is co-chairing our Campaign Executive Committee. Joining Bill as campaign co-chairs are board member Carl Kawaja and faculty members Peter Carroll and Catherine Lucy. This committee has been instrumental in getting us to this launch and will lead us through the public phase of the campaign. Today, I'm also very proud to announce a recent significant gift that help us reach the $3 billion milestone. An extraordinary $25 million gift from Dr. David Mortara to the School of Nursing. This gift will establish the new UCSF Center for Physiologic Research and is the largest gift ever to our School of Nursing. Carl. Carl Kawaja, Catherine Lucy, board member Tino Bernadette and David Mortara are here with us today and I would ask each of them to just stand and briefly be recognized. <laughs> now while it's the very large gifts that sometimes get all the attention. Let us not forget that the overall success for our fundraising campaign will be built on thousands of gifts of every size, each one of them incredibly valuable. In the quiet phase of this campaign, more than 96,000 individual donors at every level have invested in the work that we do. That to me is a truly amazing statistics. Now all of us are responsible for making this institution an institution that people want to invest in. So you may not realize it, but you are already part of the campaign. And again, I thank you. Now I think we all fundamentally understand why we need to grow philanthropic support for UCSF. But let me just share a few facts to set the stage. Our total endowment at UCSF is about $2.7 billion. Although this is a substantial amount and an amount that has grown significantly over the last few years, it is very modest compared to other premier universities who we consider our peers. It is the annual payout of the investment income earned from our endowment that supports primarily our brilliant faculty and students and contributes to the world-class research and patient care and education that we do. The endowment as it stands today, or the endowment payout as it stands today, is about 2% of our overall operating budget. A very important 2%, but at Harvard, the endowment payout is 40% of their budget. Today, less than 15% of our almost 3,000 faculty receive support from our endowment. Clearly there is a great benefit to a campaign that increases the endowment to support our faculty, freeing them to pursue innovations in research, education, and clinical care. Similarly, last year, our target for providing scholarships, our aspiration for providing scholarships to our students in all of our professional schools and graduate division was $61 million. However, we were only able to fund 38% of that aspirational goal. If we were to close that 62% gap and fund our full scholarship target for professional and graduate students through philanthropy, we would need to grow our endowment by about another $1.3 billion. A truly aspirational, but I honestly believe achievable goal. Now building our endowment is critical to maintain the amazing talent that we have at UCSF. But UCSF, the campaign, is about so much more than just fundraising. This is your campaign, 
We built it from the bottom up, not the top down. It is about the partners and individuals who work every day, day in and day out, to support our missions. It is about the next generation of healers, investigators and leaders, including the 938 new students in the 2017 fall class. That class was 44% who are first generation in their families to attend graduate school and 65% women. This campaign is also about patients and populations we serve, both locally and globally. Our communities are what makes UCSF truly unique. We are not afraid of unconventional ideas, unorthodox approaches. In fact, we embrace them. We question assumptions and sometimes arrive at truly radical solutions. Just look around you. We are surrounded by many people from different backgrounds who are passionate about generating new knowledge and improving and in save, saving lives. Now, because this is UCSF's moment, a moment we must seize on to solve some of the world's most intractable health challenges. To do that, our campaign will focus on three grand challenges. The first, decoding life to improve health. The second, leveraging discovery to revolutionize care. And the third, partnering to achieve health equity. Now joining us from Mission Bay to talk about the first of these grand challenges, decoding life to improve health, is Hana El Samad. Hana is an associate professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Bio Biophysics and is vice chair of her department. She is a senior investigator in the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub and is deputy director of the UCSF Systems and Synthetic Biology Center. Hana is also a member of our campaign executive committee and is one of the world's great experts on the inner working of cells. She joins us from Genentech Hall. Hana. Thank you, Chancellor Hoggood. Good afternoon, everyone. All through UCSF, and on our Mission Bay campus, where I'm standing here today, our daily purpose is to decode life from its atoms, genes, proteins, cells, tissues, organs, organisms, to the community, the environment, and the ecosystem. The marvelous connectedness of it all the incredible molecular networks and molecules of life, the elaborate algorithms that take a cell and make a person, but then malfunction and break that person. From the excitement in this room and the boiling creative energy that fills our institution and our campuses every day, it is clear that we stand at an incredible moment in time. We see a future where obtaining a comprehensive blueprint of life, deciphering its instruction manual, understanding its more fundamental and general principles, decoding its algorithms is in the realm of the possible. We will peer into the secret maps and passcodes of life and revel in the incredible knowledge that emerges. Knowledge in itself is an existential joy and a worthy pursuit. Such discovery-driven science is also a worthy investment in our future. Not very long ago here at UCSF, the study of a seemingly obscure defense, bacterial defense system restriction enzymes, changed the world, creating biotechnology and leading to the first recombinant insulin and growth hormone. The discovery of motor proteins, well, in squeezed out cytoplasm of a giant 
squid axon. The discovery of pain receptors by studying ion channels stimulated by hot peppers. The discovery of how cells, our cells, patch up their damaged proteins by studying the process in the yeast you use for baking. These are only a few examples in a very, very long list. And the future, our future, is a bigger promise. Because we are at a point where understanding the circuits and algorithms of life can revolutionize our ability to anticipate and prevent their failure and disease. It will bring the dawn of new therapeutics where we can rationally rewire disease circuits, where we can dispatch designer cells to diseased organs to deliver therapeutic payloads with unimaginable precision. We can harness the incredible power of the smartest machine, the cell, that we can program like a microscopic robot, a living microscopic robot that cures. Here at UCSF, we are already using a person's own immune cells, re-engineering them with self-guidance mechanisms to attack blood cancers. But this is only the beginning. We will work to vanquish solid cancers with their matched therapeutic cells. Send therapeutic cells to sites of wound to repair them and to failing organs to restore their health. Decoding life will allow us to harness the principles, machines, molecules, and networks of life to fix life. This is a very ambitious, ambitious future, but it can be made possible by large leaps in fundamental understanding of cells and organisms. It will be enabled by technological innovations to engineer them. At UCSF, we will lead the way on both fronts. This is a UCSF moment, and it is a UCSF future. Because of our relentless pursuit of understanding from the atom to the ecosystem, our relentless drive to innovate and pioneer, our relentless and fearless creativity, our relentless collaborative spirit, our scientific community that amounts to much, much more than the sum of its parts and our relentless compassion, social commitment to our city, our country, and our world. Our relentless sense of purpose. This is uniquely a UCSF moment for decoding life. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. The second grand challenge of the campaign is leveraging discovery to revolutionize care. This means translating those discoveries, moving them from the basic science laboratories into clinical trials and into healthcare settings to provide treatment and cures faster and more effectively than ever before. In this grand challenge, we will develop drugs treatments using next generation tools of, and vast troves of data, including the more than 15 million UC health patient records, perhaps the most ethnically diverse patient data repository available anywhere in the world. This data will help us create the very best care for one and all. A tool boot will help guide this work as the head of clinical informatics for UC Health across the UC system and as our inaugural director of the UCSF Institute for Computational Health Sciences. This institute was launched with a $10 million founding gift by Mark Zuckerberg and UCSF alumna Priscilla Chan. The institute sits at the very epicenter 
of this statewide effort and is a perfect example of how philanthropy can power transformational endeavors. By collecting, connecting, and applying genetic lifestyle and environmental data, we will ensure more precise care for our patients and for people everywhere. Placing patients at the center, we will reimagine how to deliver care in the future. We will create ways to care for our patients, not just in our hospitals and clinics, but we will work with them in their homes, at their work, and in their communities to sustain health and bring down healthcare costs. Now this year we also formed a consortium of the University of California's five academic cancer centers to reflect a new model for cancer research and treatment, a model that ensures collaboration on clinical trials, population health, and the best practices in harnessing big data to improve health for public benefit. This requires new thinking about regulatory science. Kathy Giacomini, a professor in the School of Pharmacy, is leading the UCSF Stanford Center for Excellence in Regulatory Science to spur new approaches and new technologies to enhance the FDA's ability to move drugs and devices from the laboratory to clinical trials with greater efficiency, greater safety, and greater efficacy. Now, another exciting development right here on the Parnassus Heights campus is ImmunoX, a concept that aims to harness exploding new knowledge about the immune system to not only tackle cancer, but many other diseases as well. Focusing on the immune system as a nucleator, nucleating factor in an ever-widening array of diseases, ImmunoX takes its cue from the immune system itself which aggregates information in nodes. Now as a first step towards the vision of ImmunoX, Max Crommel, a professor of pathology, formed a node called ImmunoProfiler, an innovative research alliance with three global pharmaceutical companies, AbbVie, Amgen, and Bristol-Myers Squibb. The goal is to improve patients' response to cancer immunotherapy and to increase the effectiveness of immunotherapy across a wider range of cancer types. This alliance was developed and launched with the assistance of UCSF Innovation Ventures, a newly reorganized office that builds collaboration and focuses on translating the university's cutting edge scientific endeavors for public use and benefit. UCSF Ventures is led by Barry Selleck, who joined my leadership team in April as our very first Vice Chancellor for Business Development, Innovation and Partnerships. Now the campaign will help us to continue focus on cutting edge innovations and drive cross-disciplinary partnerships that lead to higher quality, safer care and a better patient experience. A genuinely grand challenge for all hospitals and health systems across the country. Kirsten Bibbins Domingo is here to talk uh, with us today about the third grand challenge, partnering to achieve health equity. Kirsten is co-founder of the Center for Vulnerable Populations at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, which for a decade has strove to improve health by reducing disparities through discovery, advocacy, and community partnerships. She is a professor and chair of the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics and is the inaugural Vice Dean in the School of Medicine for Population Health and Health Equity. Kirsten, welcome, thank you. Thank you. The concept of health equity is a simple one. It's the idea that everyone should have the opportunity to live the healthiest life possible. A focus on health e equity means more than just opening our doors to everyone. It means really understanding the many factors associated with health and wellness and adapting our strategies and our interventions so that they reach all people in our community. Why should our campaign have a health equity focus? 
The gap between those living the healthiest life possible and those in poor health is growing. Health depends on a variety of factors, including our genetic code and our basic biology, and also where we live, learn, work, and play. It depends on our behaviors and environmental exposures, and is also heavily influenced by the important obstacles to health, poverty, and discrimination. We see a growing divide between the haves and the have-nots, and increasing gaps in health across the country and around the globe. And even here in our Bay Area, where we have the highest standards of living and the best measures of health in the country, we know that not everybody in our own community enjoys good health. Achieving health equity is a grand challenge. But UCSF has a track record of using our expertise and working with our partners in the community to tackle tough problems. We did so in the 80s when we took on the seemingly insurmountable challenge that faced our community at that time, that of HIV AIDS. UCSF stepped directly into this epidemic facing our community. We bought the best in our scientific discovery to identify the cause of HIV AIDS and to understand the underlying mechanisms by which it wreaks havoc on the body. And we brought the best to our patients, providing care courageously and compassionately, developing novel therapies and forming strong partnerships with the community to create new models of care that saved lives and became standard around the country and the world. It's remarkable to see how far we've come. UCSF is now partnering with others on another landmark effort, actually getting to zero. Zero new cases of HIV, zero new deaths from AIDS, and zero stigma. Achieving the best possible health for everyone in our community, including the most vulnerable, is the challenge facing us today. And just as we tackled HIV AIDS, we can bring the best that UCSF has to offer to achieve this goal as well. By making health equity an explicit focus in this campaign, we have the opportunity to bring together the extraordinary expertise we have here at UCSF, the nationally and internationally recognized leaders who are at the forefront of advancing science and clinical care in our diverse communities. We can extend our reach by developing new collaborations across our campus and by nurturing and sustaining the robust partnerships with the communities we serve. And importantly, we can catalyze the type of innovative, out-of-the-box thinking that will accelerate this urgently needed work. One example of our health equity focus is the work of Anda Kuo and Dana Long, partners from UCSF Benihoff Children's Hospital in San Francisco and Oakland. Anda and Dana are leading the charge to unite all of UCSF's efforts to ensure child wellness is a reality for all children in the Bay Area through the UCSF Child Health Equity Institute. This institute connects leading experts in clinical care, research, education and policy from across their traditional silos. Whether a pediatrician, a dentist, oncologist, psychologist, epidemiologist, or neurologist, all can work together, partnering with local governments and community stakeholders to achieve equity in child health. The Bay Area should be a place where everyone's life is determined by their own efforts and talents unfettered by poor health. This is the essence of the American dream, and it's essential to UCSF's mission of advancing health worldwide. UCSF can and will lead the way in achieving health equity for our region and be a model for how this goal can be achieved elsewhere. Achieving health equity is the grand challenge of our time, and that is why I and so many others are thrilled that we've embraced this goal as a focus for our campaign. Thank you, Kirsten. So importantly, the three grand challenges, 
decoding life to improve health, leveraging discovery to revolutionize care, and partnering to achieve health equity encompass our key priorities in what we do and who we are as a community. In planning our campaign, a recurring concept began to emerge from our volunteers and our focus groups. They felt we have been quietly amazing, perhaps too quietly. So the campaign offers a unique opportunity to shine a light on just how amazing UCSF really is. To begin to build a wider reputation for that humble excellence and for what all of you accomplish every day. I know that for many, it is hard to feel the tangible connection between the work you do every day and the role that philanthropy pays in supporting our brilliant minds, our faculty, our staff, and our students. So I want to share a few comments from two of UCSF's strongest supporters, Sir Michael Moritz and Harriet Heyman. Harriet and I have lived in the Bay Area for a very long time and obviously have become aware over the years that UCSF is one of the jewels of the Bay Area. And Harriet then had um, the pleasure of working at UCSF in uh, the neuroscience lab for several years. I came in contact with UCSF through Ellen Bassbaum. Ellen is the chairman of the anatomy department at UCSF. He's a neuroscientist. The graduate students and the postdocs were my teachers, my mentors. She was surrounded by uh, smart, capable, diligent, industrious uh, people working on one of life's intractable problems, which was pain. But it also gave a far deeper understanding of some of the challenges, in particular some of the funding challenges and program challenges that face UCSF. I wanted to take part in this in a way other than uh, working in the lab. So we um, stepped in and said that we'd provide the backbone to get the Discovery Fellows program off the ground. To further the education of young people and uh, help them become tomorrow's scientists. We've always been attracted to areas that uh, certainly for philanthropy are harder to raise money for. Basic science is more amorphous, it's less defined. It's based on the premise that if people are armed with fantastic education, something great's gonna come of it. Some of the people in the Discovery Fellows program are gonna have an impact on hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people as the decades tick by. The attributes that are appealing to us as investors are precisely the same sort of attributes that the fellows in the Discovery Program represents. They're resolute, they're tenacious, they're determined, they're indefatigable, they're resilient, they're creative, and they're imaginative. And those are the sparks that inevitably will produce wonderful results in the future. I'm absolutely confident of it. Our hope is simple. It's the opportunity and the challenge for UCSF, which is to remain as a shining beacon for scientists, clinicians, and patients, and one of the best medical settings in the world. So I hope that Michael and Harriet's message provides you with a sense of the kind of remarkable supporters who are behind the work we do every day 
and how our students inspire them. Our faculty, students, staff and patients must also have world-class facilities in which to do their work, learn and receive their care. Of the three billion dollars that has been raised and committed during the quiet phase of our campaign, 12 percent has been raised for facilities. Primarily to date to complete the vision for the Mission Bay campus that was set almost 25 years ago. In the public phase of the campaign, we will continue towards the fundraising targets we have set for new facilities or planned under construction for our clinical outpatient facilities, cancer, psychiatry, neuroscience, vision and health equity programs on our Oakland, Mission Bay and Zuckerberg San Francisco general campuses. Now the long-term vision of our university is quite clear. For the next century and beyond, UCSF will be a model for a multi-site urban campus that is a trusted anchor institution in our community. Today, our two primary sites in San Francisco, Parnassus Heights and Mission Bay, are well balanced in all ways except one. Every day, roughly the same number of people come to work on our two campuses. The same number of researchers drive discovery on our two campuses and patients come for care and learners attend class on both campuses. The striking exception is the age and functionality of our facilities. We now stand ready to face the challenge of rejuvenating the facilities on the Parnassus Height campus so that they match the excellence of the researchers, clinicians, students and staff who work on this campus. Now just as the Mission Bay campus was a 25 year journey from conception to today's reality, the rebuilding of Panassas Heights will be a decades long journey. But now is the time to start. The enormity of this task cannot and should not be minimized, but it will be a priority for me and my successors. I am very excited and grateful for the impassioned engagement of the Panassas Heights based faculty in this process. They have envisaged several incredibly exciting ideas for anchoring programs for our Panassas Heights campus for years to come. The ImmunoX program I mentioned earlier is just one example of many compelling programs. Our people and these programs deserve world-class modern facilities at our flagship Panassas Heights campus. We have initiated several internal studies in the last year that will inform a visionary master plan and help us develop a phased campus renewal strategy. Just as with the Mission Bay, the vision for Parnassus Heights will need to be big and bold enough to inspire our supporters. But based on the passion of the faculty and the boldness of their vision, I am very confident that we will begin this journey during our campaign for UCSF. Now, of course, as much as the campaign is about building our endowment, raising program support and building facilities, it is equally vital to raise our voice. Not just for ego, not for self-promotion, but to affect change. We are saving lives in our communities and solving problems around the globe. We are revolutionizing health and science and we are speaking out for and serving the most vulnerable. This is UCSF's moment. The campaign celebrates all of you. You are the innovators. You are the dedicated. You are the transformers. You are the advocates and the caregivers. And for the campaign to be successful, for UCSF to be successful, I invite you to also be the storytellers. Share news of this campaign and the work we do on social media. Tell your colleagues at other institutions about how we are redefining what is possible in health and science. Get a hold of a campaign t-shirt today and wear it proudly. <laughs> I hope you will all go out and tell your story to your family, your friends and the world. Now before you do that, 
I have one more story to share with you today. They are the Mavericks, the pioneers, the visionaries. They are not the type to seek accolades or the limelight. Rather, they've always preferred to be quietly amazing. Perhaps it's because they're too busy discovering, healing, learning, teaching, treating, caring, and solving the grand challenges. Yes, UCSF is ranked the number one medical center in California and one of the top five hospitals in the nation. But rather than resting on laurels, the visionaries at this great university are more focused on leading us to the future as they decode the mysteries of health and life. They are the mighty who are prepared to tackle our massive global challenges and opportunities. They are the radicals, the unconventional, the Nobel laureates. They are the audacious who are preventing disease before it starts, the curious who are advancing basic research to reveal the mechanisms of biology, the revolutionaries who are performing trillions of virtual experiments to speed the development of new medicines, the tenacious who are engineering immune cells to kill cancer. They are the impassioned who are breaking down barriers to health equity and the compassionate who nurture and care for the young and old alike. They are vanquishing Alzheimer's, autism, MS, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, AIDS, pandemics, and any other threat that might arise. This is a unique community unlike any other. They are relentlessly striving to improve health and the quality of life for all. We invite you to join them, champion them, or be healed by them. We are launching the campaign website today, and these videos will be available on that site. So I want to uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening. A special big thanks to Hannah and Kirsten for sharing their stories. And uh, I hope you can all join us for a reception at each of the sites. Uh, thank you all very much.